Welcome to He's Been Doing It All Day. We're Adam and Simon and brought to you by the Carlton Draft. Check them out, carltondrafttshirts.com. Check us out on Instagram at at been doing it all day or you can watch the entire episode. Just search for He's Been Doing It All Day on YouTube, Mondays, 7.30 p.m. The entire episode will be out on YouTube, so make sure you check that out. This is round 11.5. St Kilda versus Geelong. For the second week in a row, we take you back a full seven days to the first game of a Monday double header. And what is even the what is even happening at this point? Look, Tommy Hawkins, these are the important points. Tommy Hawkins kicked five. Gary Rowan, Rowan, Rowan the boat was kicking more goals than a regatta. He had four. Geelong kicked nine in a row to really squander the Saints as they got up and about. But most importantly, the big event of that game was Zach Tui solidifies his place in the Hungry Hungry Hippos Goal Kickers Club Hall of Fame by being the first AFL player to complete the patented hippo celebration after his first goal. The Catters win by 59 points. Dockers versus Hawks. A bit of Monday night footy to kick off the week and this game just about went into Tuesday morning with bounce down at 20 to 9. Captain Stratton lost the toss but decided he'd still pick which way the Hawks went and had Nat Fife more confused than an Amish electrician. Sam Frost's performance left Hawks fans a bit icy as he tried to run as far as Steve Monaghetti without taking a bounce, only to have the turnover directly result in a goal. It was a case of K-Chera-Chera chera for, doc- for the Dockers as Adam ran rampant with 26 touches and the Frio midfield did as they pleased. The lone highlight for the Hawks came as James Sisley took a trip on Virgin Galactic and soared into the stars with an absolute hanger in the goal square. Frio convincing with a 16-point win. Crows versus the Pies. A game of two halves. In the first half, Adelaide were Adelaide and Collingwood were worse. The Crows fans finally had something to smile about. At halftime lead, took them to a happy place in their halftime toilet break. It would have been wise for the Crows supporters to flick the footy off, turn on a recap of Grey's Anatomy, see Meredith and McDreamy on one of the cheeky reruns, because the second half got ugly. Collingwood found their pace. Jaden Stevenson kicked two. <laughs> Trey Rusco's Modern Life kicked two. And Mr. Darcy Cameron also kicked two. The Woodsman did enough. The Pies by 24. Suns versus the Dons. Now, we're not going to waste your time recapping the first three and a half quarters of this game because it all happened in the final 10 minutes. The Suns leading by 12. Josh Corbett showed he's not a Corvette and looked slower than a sausage dog in a greyhound race as he was run down with the goal open more than a 7-11. The Don slammed on four straight to take the lead with David Zaharakis pinging a quad and still kicking it from 40. Max King put on the crown as he kicked one to tie it up and then promptly took the crown right off as he missed the chance to take the lead back soon after. Hungry Hungry Hippos star Isaac Rankin absolutely did the right thing and had a shot from 55 metres to win with 15 seconds to go, only for it to fall short, get tackled, get smothered and run out of bounds before the siren. Boys, grab your sisters, it's time to hit the dance floor. Essendon 73, Suns 73. Round 12 started, yes, we're doing a bit of round 12. Started with the Swans versus the Giants. It was the Battle of the Bridge over the Swan River this time. Someone forgot to tell the Giants, though, and I'm pretty sure if you check the security footage from Subiaco Oval, that's where the Giants' first team would have been because surely it was the Rezies that turned up to Optus Stadium. The Swans played inspired football. Horse was happy as a horse with a bit of hay. They controlled the tempo all day. Luke Parker looked like a puppet master out there telling everyone what to do. And the lizard Nick Blakey paid his best game. He kicked two and was all over everything. Although, whoever sanctioned his blonde moustache needs to take a good hard look at themselves because that's clearly a prank. (laughs) The Giants scored the same as they did in last year's grand final, which wasn't good then. And let me tell you, it wasn't good now. The Swannies by 41. Cats versus Port. Port Adelaide must not have paid the electricity bill because the power was out at Metricon Stadium. The team on top of the ladder kicked one goal for the entire first half of football. Tom Hawkins looks like it takes all of the olive oil in Italy to oil up his arms alone as he glistened his way to half a dozen sausages, while Port's big forward Charlie Dixon probably should have had the Spyrax and the Grey let out to take some notes because he had three touches and didn't register a score all game. 
Tough to talk about anyone but the Tomahawk, though. He was like a Big Mac among cheeseburgers, an LCD TV among plasmas, a crunchy among violet crumbles, and he ended up outscoring the power team by himself. The Cats obliterate the pair by 10 goals. The Lions versus the Roos. This was Adam versus Simon. In a battle of the Titans, this was one for the ages. Well, not really. This looked like second playing second bottom, but second were having a fairly slow day. The Roos made sweeping changes to their lineup and gave the kids a run. Lockie Nealon on the ground is on another level. He's in Brownlow level. Just give him the thing now, it's all over. Jed Anderson and Dane Zorko had a tackle off, which finished in a tie. And lastly, I know that spicy takes come later, but mark my words, Cam Zerha will be a better version of Jordan Dugowie. Two to three years, I give it. Brisbane lead from start to finish, but the Roo boys made it very uncomfortable the whole time, and after the siren goal from Cam Zerha, brought it back in to a one-point lead for the Brisbane Lions. D's versus Pies. Put down your camembert cheese knife and your lavosh cracker, boys, because the D's are coming. I don't know if it's because petrol for the Range Rovers is cheap at the moment, but the Demons are absolutely flying. Well, flying as much as they can in the current environment. But in this game, much like Tiger Woods in the 2002 Masters, they led from wire to wire. The Pies had a dirty night and there isn't enough ham on Ben Reed's strings to feed a family or two at Christmas as he went down with another soft tissue injury. Brody Meyer Chiggity must not have Chiggity checked himself because he absolutely riggity wrecked himself in an outrageous act of bravery. All jokes aside though, Sheesh. it was incredibly brave and we genuinely hope that he's okay. In the end, both teams should begin to fear the red and the blue as they went on to roll the pies by 56 points. The Dockers versus the Blues. Now this one was an arm wrestle. Frio got out to a three goal lead on the back of Matty the Tab Tabernar. But the baggers stuck fat and dragged them back in. But this game was all about the last quarter. No goals for 22 minutes. The ball ping-ponged between 50-meter arcs until with less than a minute ago, minute to go, the tab pushed it out and the umpire called bullshit. That's deliberate, brother. Then a dicey downfield free kick left the ball in the hand of Jack Nunes. The siren goes. The baggers are two points down. 40 meters out. Standing on the fence. Now, James Brayshaw isn't always a lyrical gymnast of Hutto or Jared when he's commentating, but let me tell you, if you want raw, unfiltered enthusiasm for big shit happening in footy, he is your man. He commentates like a bloke at the pub watching, and he is elite. Take it away, JB. Set shot. He strikes it beautifully. He's got it. The Blues win it. Jack Nunes after the siren has won the game for Carlton. That is unbelievable. The umpires had a shocking final 60 seconds, and that's all anyone from the west of Werribee to the tip of Albany will be talking about. But on behalf of all the Baggers supporters, you can all bloody get stuffed. The Baggers are coming, mate. The Baggers are coming. And Jack Nunes is the saviour. He will never pay for another beer on Ligon Street. And that's why you watch sports. If it happened in a movie, you wouldn't believe it. The Blues win after the siren. Dogs versus Crows. Everyone's very nervous every time they play the Crows. No one wants to lose to the winless team, which is stupid because they haven't won a game for a reason. They're not very good at football this year. Aaron the Astro Norton decided it was silly to waste touches on anything that's not a shot at goal as he kicked six goals one from eight possessions. Marcus Bontempelli had as many touches as there are centimetres on his nose. He had 33 of them, nine tackles and kicked two goals. The Baileys of the Bulldogs combined for 69 touches. Nice. And the Doggies kicked nine in a row while the Crows had 10 players that had less than 10 touches each. Turns out you can't win if you don't have the footy. Doggies by 57 points. And to give you your live update of St Kilda versus Essendon, quarter two, 20 minutes in, St Kilda 4-5-29, lead Essendon one straight six. And then there's going to be some other games tonight. We'll recap them next week. And that was round 11.5. Boys, that went for a long time. That was a lot of recaps. Yep. That was a lot of recaps. And that leads me into my first take. There is such thing as too much footy. There is. It's too much. Yep. It's too much. Footy every day is unnecessary. And the AFL's talking about doing this again next year. 
It's too much. I think they just throw that. At, I think they throw that out as like, oh, we, we might do this again next year. And then if everyone comes <laughs> back and he's like, that is the worst idea ever, they literally back away from. They do this with the grand final, night grand final every year. So I don't know if they yeah. will necessarily 100 percent lock it in. It's like having dessert for breakfast, then dessert for lunch, and then you have dessert for dinner as well. You're like, it's too sweet. My teeth hurt. Like I'm not sleeping well. Uh, I'm thirsty all the time. This uh, like I've. Turns out you can have too much of a good thing. I'm still going to watch all the games, but I'm just not going to enjoy them as much as I normally would. I feel like it's just everyone that's working in AFL is like, oh, this is great. This is really good. But the average punter, everyone you talk to, is just saying, nah, too much. You don't know who's playing. There's footy on every night, which, I mean, mate, I want to watch a bit of Batch or mm. something. Like, I want to watch something mm. else, you know? It's just too much. Too much for me. That's why we're here, though. That's why he's been doing it all day. He's here for you because we will give you the recaps that you need without having to watch the games that you don't want to watch. Exactly. We're the service to the people. This is a public yeah. service for the people. Yeah. You don't have to watch that. <laughs> and speaking of too much for the recaps, we're done with recaps. We're done with this chat. So we're going to move straight in to our interview. And this week's interviewee is dual Richmond Premiership player. People love Richmond. He was also part of the All Australians 40 squad in 2018. It's Kane Lambert. <laughs> As we mentioned, Sime, today's guest is two time. Premiership superstar, more importantly, All-Australian 40-member squad from 2018, the number 23 for Richmond, Kane Lambert. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on, mate. Hey, uh, first question, we will start with a bit of footy. Who plays on Isaac Rankin tomorrow? Do you get him? Uh, gladly. Or thankfully, it won't be me. Um, <laughs> whoever, whoever it is is going to have a, have a tough task. So I reckon... Um, there's a fair chance the boys will walk to someone else and uh, <laughs> the last one there might get him, but uh, he's a quality player. But there's uh, there's plenty of quality players down the sun at the moment, so they're going to be a tough task. You reckon you um you guys walk down there as a back six and everyone just starts pointing at everyone else? Just like, you've got him. Yeah, you're on. You're on, mate. You're on. Well, I'm not sure what the back six do. I tend to walk up the other end <laughs> with, the, uh, with the forward, so I, I avoid all that sort of stuff. Now... Uh, you playing up forward with Tom Lynch, and we've noticed he's a, a very much a friend of the show and very much a proud member of the He's Been Doing It All Day crowd. But can you tell us why he's been so angry the last few weeks? Because he just seems to have been taking those angry pills a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he's an angry man on the footy field, I think, because he's not the um, the big dog up in Gold Coast anymore. People <laughs> might have forgotten him up here. So he's he's probably a little bit upset about that, to be honest. <laughs> He's not walking down. He's not walking down Cavalave anymore, and people are saying, "Hey, get in here to bedroom. You get the first. You can go straight and cut the line." Yeah, well, he's actually sharing a room next to me. I reckon um, usually he'd be up in the um, you know the master suite somewhere, but he's got the little small shoebox room like I have. So maybe. Maybe that's getting to him a bit. He's or probably maybe he, might snore. Maybe, maybe he can hear me snoring through the wall. <laughs> he's probably lucky to uh, to fit in the bed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's uh, got a duck under the uh, exit signs when he walks out the doors. He's just in there with his feet hanging off the edge. I love it. Hey, um, mate, you love kicking goals, and we love blokes that love kicking goals more than anything, so much so that we've actually got a little club on our show. It's called the Hungry Hungry Hippos Goal Kickers Club. Um, Tom Papley is firmly established in there. Zach Tui just became a life member last week. So first question is, if you love kicking goals, do you want to be in the Hungry Hungry Hippos Club? I'd love to be in the Hungry Hungry Hippos Club. <laughs> Great. I can't wait I can't wait for the day that someone says, oh, you know what? Not for me. <laughs> no, not for me. <laughs> so, well, I don't so, actually kick one for quite a while, so um, hopefully this might be the start of something. Mate. Well, last week, Zach Tui kicked a goal, and then he did the patented Hungry Hungry Hippos celebration. So the celebration is you kind of – after you kick your goal – You've got to do – it's almost like a baby shark type motion. You know when they get to like the daddy shark and it's the big hand clapping? Except instead of uh, clapping the hands together, you've got to turn your fingers together. Adam will send you a video of him doing the Hungry Hungry Hippo. So after you kick a goal, if you do that celebration, mate, you're in. You're in the Hungry Hungry Hippos for life. No worries. Well, after last week, I might even do that after I get kicked. To be honest. <laughs> yeah. We'll yeah, take I'm it whenever. No worries. But that is that's the the only rules to be a part of the hungry hungry hippos is to do the celebration. So we're very much on board that. And we had a we've got a loyal listener who we told uh, that we were interviewing you or that we're having a chat with you today, and he wanted to know 
in the goals that you have kicked, the 27 prelim goal to open the account of the Tigers. He wanted to know, were you trying to kick it into the fourth tier to the bloke sitting up in the back row? <laughs> well, p- potentially. I, um, you know, There's two things about that goal. It's probably one of the loudest cheers I've ever heard, but also one of the, uh, the best cherry-picking ones. It was, <laughs> probably cost Dusty Martin one of the best goals <laughs> of his career. But um, I was happy to take it. I um, I'm not sure if I have the ability to kick it that high, though, to be honest. So, mate, you say the cherry picking goal like it's a bad thing. That's something that a hungry, hungry hippo would be proud of. <laughs> yeah. Very, very proud. Yeah, yeah fair call. <laughs> and is Richmond's part of their uh, recruiting strategy? Is it to go with blokes with hyphens? Because there's Derek Egmelee Smith, there's Riley Collier Dawkins, there's Callum Coleman Jones. Have you guys not got enough surnames to go around? At the sides? Oh, well, I think the best thing is is that you can get sort of three or four nicknames out of the one the one person. So, <laughs> um, you know, Eggy with Derek Egg, you know, there's all sorts, CJ the Zombie, and, um, you know, there's nicknames to score all with those boys. Who who has the best nickname at the Tigers, do you think? The best nickname at the Tigers? Um, probably, yeah, probably CJ, Callum Colvin Jones with um, Zombie. You know, he's just like a big zombie that always sleeps. He, he's... <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> it probably originated from a footy trip, to be honest. So um, maybe, maybe it's on. Now, we also like to ask, because this started, we asked our Brandon Ellis, a former Tiger, obviously, who some young blokes that we wouldn't know about and who the listeners probably wouldn't have heard too much about unless they're an avid, uh, an avid fan of the club. And he came up with Isaac Rankin a week before he came on the scene and absolutely tore it up. So are there any young blokes at the Tigers who we haven't heard of? Who are who you reckon are in for a serious career ahead? Uh, well, you would have heard of him now, uh, probably a, uh, a couple of years a Premiership player. But Shay Bolton's come onto the scene, uh, which I felt like was coming for a long time. But um, another one who hasn't had the opportunity yet, who I think is going to be a good player, is um, Riley Collier Dawkins. So I think once he gets an opportunity, um, he's going to be a, a very good player. What's um, what's his nickname so that we can get on it early, mate? Well, there's it was RCD because of their yeah you know, they're obviously mm-hmm. the winners, but um, maybe we could, maybe we can make one up for him and, and it can Ooh, start here. Yeah. Well, he's he's like a border collier, you know, border collier oh, dog. Yeah. <laughs> Do we call him the dog? Just call him the dog. Sheepdog, he's a sheepdog. Bang, there you go. Collier Dawkins is a sheepdog. He's a primo sheepdog. There you go. Collier Dawkins is now called the sheepdog. Mate, I've got um I've got one more question for you. How disappointed were you? Um, so you joined the Tigers. They've got the yellow and black as the theme song. It's obviously universally kind of been dubbed as the best theme song in the comp. Were you guys a bit devo when the Giants came in with Big Big Sound? Because that's taken off. It's taken off as one of the best songs in the comp. Do you think it stands up to yellow and black? Well, I've never, I've never sung it, to be honest. So I'm not really <laughs> sure. I don't, I don't know the lyrics. So, uh, but... No, the um, you, you can't beat the uh, the yellow and black. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, I haven't got a lot for you with that. I, yeah, I'm bored <laughs> about it, you know. So. That's all right, mate. You don't have to. You haven't yeah. haven't sung the lyrics and don't plan on singing them any time in the future. No, it's not on my agenda. No. Very good, and we so Dimmer as well. We've uh, we were at Fox Footy for the launch this year, and Dimmer pointed us out and uh, just called us the Gogglebox boys because he wasn't sure of our name, even though he said he was a massive fan of the show. He pointed us out and didn't know our names. Can you? So tomorrow, can you just please like let him know that you had a chat with Adam and Simon? And he's probably not going to know who they are, and then you can just say it was the Gogglebox boys and he might actually know. Yeah, no worries. He, does, he has referenced the Gogglebox a few <laughs> times, so I will back him up there. But he talks about the dog. You know, I'm not sure of the name. Um he talks about uh, – he does talk about the goggle box a bit, so I'll back him in. We, we heard that that was the story, that he talked about the dog and because the dog just humps everything and that was that was kind of the analogy. It was like, just go out and get it. Yeah, that's exactly right. So there's <laughs> truth to that. Perfect. Well, we hope you do go out and get it tomorrow, mate. Kick that goal. Get on board the Hungry Hungry Hippos. Thanks for joining us, Kane. No worries. Thanks for the chat. Time for the weekly award, boys. Time to find out who has been doing it all day. Go for it, Sime. My who's been doing it all day. Look, I I don't know. I'm in a bit of a streak of the vets at the moment. I'm really liking him. I'm going Mm -hmm. with Sydney backman, Dane Rampey. 
<laughs> Mate, he's a gun. He's a gun. Broken hand, still got 22 touches. Anytime the ball went in there, bounced back out. Ten, he had 10 50 rebound, 10 rebound 50s. Mate, How about any the time glove it goes that he wears? In, oh, it looks like a golf glove. It looks like he's about to drive off at the 8th. <laughs> like it looks no good. He actually marked one on the weekend and then had to take his hand off it. <laughs> because his, his hand is clearly still broken. So he's my he's been doing it all day. 22 touches, 10 rebound 50s. Mate, any time it went in, didn't look like getting past him. You don't reckon, You don't look too happy with that one, Justin? Oh, look, as a, someone who grew up in Sydney their whole life, I don't have much um, love for the Swans. And, yeah, let's just probably, <laughs> probably leave it there. It's probably not one I can truly identify with, but that's okay. A lot of people might. <laughs> Fair enough. Who's yours then? Who's your doing it all day? Um, I'm going to a man that I reckon a lot of people have just sort of written off and has just been cast into the uh, just the, the whatever category. Someone who just turns abyss. up each week. Into the abyss. Got rid of, I reckon early was a tagger and people just sort of, that's it. Your, your, your paper's a stamp for life. Ed Kerno. He had 33 last night. Ooh. Yes. In, in, yep. if, yeah. if, you could, if you could ring up Jane Bunn and say, Jane, forecast me some Ed Kerno weather, she would, she would have given it to you what it was in Perth last night. Wet, greasy, slippery, just rank. He loves it. He had 33. <laughs> And I've just looked up his stats since 2016. He's averaged 25, 22, 25, 23, and he's at 19 this year, which is which is good for 25. So I reckon he's actually sort of been hanging around at Carlton for a little bit longer than people probably give him credit for. And he does a lot of good grunt stuff that the Murphys and the, those types don't really get in and do. So shout Mate, out. I was going to say grunt for sure because he is he's kilometres in the legs. People talk about elite runners mm. like Whitfield and Scully and all that. Ed Kerno is yeah. a guy who is – Genuinely going to run all day. He's getting 15 Ks on the clock for sure. He's the bloke at training that runs until he spews and then runs again. Yeah. He's yep. that guy. Yeah. Good one. I'll pay that. What about you, Adam? Who's been doing it all day? For me, so Collingwood has, Collingwood's got a great midfield. They've got Trelaw and they've got uh, Pendlebury and they've got Sidebottom. There's a lot of big names in there, but one guy who has been doing it all, Taylor Adams. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, Taylor Adams. Yep. He like the pies got absolutely smashed, and he still had thirty on the weekend. He is the most underrated member of that midfield mm-hmm. by a long way. He does, and he does all of the the inside stuff. He's the guy who handballs it to Pendlebury that looks like Pendlebury's in lots of space. Taylor Adams is doing the tackling. He's doing the inside mm-hmm. stuff. He has been doing it all day. I don't reckon. I, I don't. I don't reckon I brought it up here, but I reckon after about two weeks this year, me and a few of my mates were here watching the footy, and it was when Cochin and that were all out, and Prestia was just killing it, doing all the heavy lifting, and we said, if you could have tomorrow Dion Prestia or Taylor Taylor Adams, who would you have? And I think everyone said Prestia, and I was like, I think I'd have Adams, oh, nah. and I reckon now it's Adams mm, yeah. in a landslide. Yeah, for sure. All right, that's it for another episode of He's Been Doing It All Day. As we said at the start, the episode is shown in full on YouTube at 7.30 Monday night. Just look up He's Been Doing It All Day and check us out on Instagram at Been Doing It All Day. It's been a big week in footy. It's been so much to see. Still goes, boys. Put the backpacks on, mate. It's not over yet. (laughs) I know. And to give you an update, the Saints and the Dons, the Saints are leading 7-5 to two goals. The Saints look like they're going to beat the Dons. Who knows what's going to happen later for the West Coast and the Hawks. That'll be a schmacking. Who's your tip? West Coast, Hawthorne, go. Well, it has to be West Coast in WA. Show, you barrack for Hawthorne. Who's your tip? Beat them in round 23 last year. We'll bloody do it again. Get absolutely stuffed, Eagles. All right, we'll see you next week.